Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number nine. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI 348 chapter seven start or the finished version, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we have a shipping cost problem. And it's a lookup problem where we're not going to be able to use the VLOOKUP function. Now, let's just read our problem here. A compressor sales company has four shipping centers, Seattle, Milwaukee, Birmingham, and Oakland. It delivers the compressors to customers by truck. The per mile shipping charge is $3.11 with a minimum charge of 75 bucks. For each customer, determine the shipping center, either one, two, three, or four which has the shortest distance, and then calculate the total shipping charge for each customer transaction. Now here's our database with all of our customers, and there's the zip code. So you can see for this particular zip code, this table, which has Seattle at that zip code, Milwaukee zip code, Birmingham zip code, Oakland zip code. But each row in this table tells us how many miles from the particular shipping center to this zip code. So if we're looking through here, then if we're shipping to Chandler, Arizona, we would want to use Oakland, California. Ah, once we determine that for every single one of our records, and let's control down arrow. So the table shows us all of the transactions. Looks like we have about 70 customer transactions that we need to calculate. The min distance, then we need to figure out amongst one, two, three, four, which one of the shipping centers, and then we need to calculate shipping costs. So it looks like three extra columns. Now I'm going to go ahead and click in this cell, and I went ahead and added min distance, shipping center, total shipping charge, and added some formatting here. Now the min formula, remember for each one of these customer zip codes for a particular shipment of a compressor, here are the miles. So we need to create a formula right here that will tell us the min number of miles. That's not a hard one. We say equals, hey, there's the min function. And we'll highlight the four relative cell references close parentheses, control enter, and double click and send it down. I'm going to control down arrow just to check. And sure enough, it got it right, control up arrow. So for each one of these customer zip codes, which represents a shipment for a compressor, we know the min distance. Now we need to calculate the shipping center. Well, th this is an easy one here. And I'm going to right click, click the Format Painter, and click both of these cells. And so we have our green and our border. Well, this is not hard. I already know it's 766, so I look at 766 amongst these four. Then I jump up and I get Oakland, and then I bring Oakland and put it back here. Next, for this one, 758 looks like Oakland, Oakland. Now this one right here, what do I do? I look up 373 amongst these four. I find the relative position 1, 2. I go up and get the Milwaukee and bring it back over here. Now, VLOOKUP is not going to do this, because notice we always have a min distance to look up in a range of values. So for any one of these, we have a lookup value, a lookup range to determine the position. And then we have, in every single formula, we're always going to have these values to look up. Now, last video. We learned about the lookup function, and that's never going to work here because that only does approximate match, and we cannot sort these values at all. So no problem. There's an awesome lookup function, which we saw lots in our prerequisite class, the index function. Now the index function, we'll, get to, we'll see it a lot in this class. But that array is where you put the values you want to look up. And it's amazing. It can be a one-way horizontal, one-way vertical, or a two-way. Our array of values to look up is a one-way horizontal. Now I'm copying this down, and I always need it locked, so I hit the F4 key, comma. Now index needs a row. And notice these are columns. This first argument, row number, if the array is one way, and it doesn't matter if it's vertical or horizontal. Vertical, that means filled with row positions, or horizontal, filled with column positions. If that array is one way, then the row number argument 
is all you need to give it, just some relative position, and it will retrieve the right element. Later in the class, we'll use the array, and we'll see that we have to use both row and column for a two-way lookup. Now, what are we going to do? Well, I already can see here, if I was looking up 766 amongst these four, one, two, three, four, it would be the fourth relative position in these numbers, which would easily get me the Oakland. So what do we use in the row number? We use the match function. Now, the match is a lookup function. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a lookup value of our min distance. There it is, lookup value, comma, lookup array. It's always looking it up in those four values. And notice both the lookup value and the lookup array are relative cell references. Now, what does match do? It's not going to look up 766 and get 766. No, match function looks through a range and returns the relative position. 1, 2, 3, 4, it'll return a 4. Now, comma, we're using exact match. 0, because these values are not sorted. Close parentheses. That's all we need. Notice it comes back to our index function, and that match is going to deliver a relative position to index's row number. Now, I very carefully close parentheses, Control Enter, double click, and send it down. That is pretty cool. We're using index and match, F2, to look up a min value amongst some miles for a particular zip code and return the shipping center. Now, our third task here is to calculate total shipping charge. Well, we know the min miles, 766. Oh, but we're given some formula input. So I'm going to very carefully, and off to the side, I'm going to build an assumption area. Now, I'm always going to put formula inputs, parameters, assumptions, and variables. The textbook uses parameters. I like to use formula inputs. But all of these are synonyms for what we're putting into formulas, things that can vary. We're going to increase the column widths of this first one because we're going to have some long labels. And then the second one, and add some formatting. And now over here, we have a per mile shipping charge. And it looks like it's 311, so 3.11. Control Enter, Control 1, Tab, Arrow, Arrow. Enter for our currency. By the way, Control 1, it, there's a keyboard, Control Shift 4 for currency. The difference is that Control Shift 4 always puts these red brackets for accounting and red for a negative. And I don't like that. I like the minus. And so that's the first one in the format cells text box. We still have minimum charge, and that's going to be 75 control enter and I'm just going to right click that paintbrush and click right there add some borders now we can build our formula let's just try a simple formula equals well I know the miles times and there is the per mile charge and I need to F4 to lock it down on that 311. We're not going to run into any rounding error here, so I don't need the round function. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Well, I can already see for this one right here, four miles, and there's a charge of uh, 1244. Let's see, yes, yeah, shipping to Berkeley, California from Oakland is not very far. So we need to amend our formula because the min charge is 75, F2. And I'm going to use the if function because really, if this amount is less than $75, then we need to put in the 75. Otherwise, false would be equal to or greater. Then we just let this formula run. So I'm going to use if. And I'm going to have to use that little bit twice, so I'm going to copy it. I'm going to ask the question, hey, are you less than our hurdle? And I'm going to lock it down with the F4 key. If it's less, comma, then I need this hurdle, F4. That's the value if true. Otherwise, the value of false control V is our formula. So if function always needs some logical test that comes out true or false, then we put what to put in the cell if it comes out true, what to put in the cell if it comes out false. So you can always think of the if function as the function you want to use when you have one of two things you're putting into a cell. Now, in this case, we have a cell reference. 
or a formula. All right, control enter, double click and send it down. And so now for those situations where we had less than 75, we get not that 1244, but the 75. Now my cell's right there. I'm going to control down arrow because I need to F2 and check if I got all the cell references right. And it looks like I did. Control up arrow. Wow, so in this video we saw how to solve a shipping cost problem using the min, the awesome index and match, and using the if function to put one of two things in the cell. All right, this is the last video for Chapter 7. Chapter 7 was all about building smart spreadsheets with a set of rules about good spreadsheet model building. All right, next chapter we'll talk about, we'll actually jump back to Chapter 2 and do descriptive statistics. All right, we'll see you next video.